All right, so going through the jet today to document the electrical system. Um, so we're going to test a couple things, and I think we've got most of it covered, so then we can hook up our instrument panel. Um, that way we know all our indicators, our pressure gauges, all that stuff should work as it was intended. So let's take a quick... Um, just been sketching out some of the, the diagrams, what we're seeing, where wires are running to and from, and uh, what they're connected to. Got our trusty multimeter out. Um, just got done checking... Our thermocouples, um, I think there's like nine of these, um, and they're all in parallel. So if any individual thermocouple fails, by hooking them in parallel, it'll be the average of all nine. So it shouldn't affect uh, the EGT temperatures very significantly. I think that's the intent there. And then if we look at our manual, we can see a little bit of a diagram here where we have all of our thermocouples connected. They go into this control box, and then we've got a compensating thermocouple over here. I assume that's kind of to calibrate whatever air is built up into that thermocouple. Not really too worried about it. I think we'll be pretty accurate no matter what you do. Um, so I did take a couple measurements. I measured the resistance across all the thermocouples in parallel. And we had 0 0.3 ohms, which if I look at this diagram, 0 0.3 and a couple more decimal places, that's right about where we need to be. And uh, it is about 77 degrees in here today, so that works out. And then I did measure the resistance across the compensating thermocouple. Um, you know, it says 1.15 ohms. I think we're reading about 3.4. Um, so I'll do a little digging into that. Um, but, but I think overall the EGT temp should be pretty accurate. So once we hook this up to our uh, pyrometer, um, in our instrument cluster, this stuff should work fine. So EGTs is one of those uh, pretty critical um, indicators on whether or not this thing's running very healthy. Um, so we need to make sure that's going to be working. Um, we've got our instrument panel hooked up and our gauge is hooked up to a power supply. So um, we'll turn things on, test a couple things, um, give it a little bit of a dry run, make sure it looks like some of our gauges and everything are going to work the way that they're intended to before we actually go to fire this thing up. So let me walk you through it real quick. All right, so we got our fancy uh, control panel, instrument panel sitting here. Um, power supply hooked up to it. Went through this rat nest of wiring, but we've got our oil pressure gauge, our fuel pressure gauge. We got our igniter, some indicator lights. Um, oil pressure gauge and light. This is very temporary. This is just to get the jet fired up. Um, you know, we see all this wiring just hanging off to the side. You know, we've got our 24 volt terminal block, our grounding terminal block, and then our terminal block that has the connections for our uh, thermocouples, our igniter, um, and our tack on here. So this is all temporary. Everything's got speaker clips and terminal box, just in case it doesn't work how it's supposed to. Um, it's easy to move uh, some of the signals around, um, make sure everything works. Then once it's proven out, when it's on the pontoon, then I'll go through and take the time to actually build the right wire harnesses, cut everything the length, make it all nice and pretty. So, Okay, so now that we got that stuff hooked up, let's uh, flip a couple of switches and see if a couple of the things on the instrument panel hopefully work. So let's uh, go ahead, just turn our power supply on quick. Okay, we've got voltage there. Um, this is our 24 volt on power, so give that a flick. Our oil pressure indicator's on. Um, should be indicating that there's not sufficient oil pressure, but we'll see if that's wired right. So everything looks okay. Um, you're not gonna see any activity on any of the indicators yet until we start spooling this thing over. Um, should be able to get RPM, even running it up on the starter. Uh, the thermocouple, you're probably not going to get any reading on. I could heat it up with a torch to make sure it works, but um, I took a reading with the multimeter, and it, it's reading what it should on the thermocouple, so assuming this beat-up gauge isn't too damaged, we'll see if that works. Um, and then oil pressure. So we've got oil in the tank, so even turning up on starter, we should see oil pressure. And those are two good indicators. This thing will be running how it needs to once, once we start it. And that our igniter, I can give that a flick and see if see if we get some spark. You're not going to see anything, but you should be able to hear it. And I don't know if you can hear that or not, but that, that igniter is definitely 
kicked on. You can hear it clicking. And now it's off. And then we've got a fuel pressure gauge. I don't, we're not going to see any fuel pressure on this thing because we're just going to gravity feed. Um, we've got our fuel line going to this flow control valve. And that's just going to a 5-gallon tank with a bulkhead on it. So we're going to first try to fire it up with that. The guy that I got said that you could uh, gravity feed the jet to get it to start. Um, so we're going to try that first. I'm questioning it a little bit because there's fuel dump valves underneath this thing. We've got a fuel dump valve there and a second one up there. So the idea is if there isn't su uh, sufficient fuel, like if you let off the throttle, so there's, you know, you want the thing to spool down, you don't continue burning fuel that's in those lines because um, it'll take a while to spool down. So the intent is there's some spring-loaded valves in there that when they don't have enough fuel pressure, they'll bypass the jet combustion chamber and dump them down into the ground or the tank or whatever you have them going into. That way it just drains that fuel system. Um, so I do know that there is some amount of fuel pressure required to close those mechanical dump valves so that the fuel actually goes into the jet. Um, so I don't know what it is. It's not really talked about well in the service manual. So we'll try to gravity feed it first. If that doesn't work, you'll tell by fuel dumping on the ground out of the valves. And then um, we'll put a small inline fuel, pre uh, fuel pump on there. There's plans that I have for a permanent fuel pump, high pressure fuel pump, uh, high volume high pressure fuel pump. Um, but I didn't want to go through the effort of plumbing all that stuff. I got hydraulic lines laid out for some of this stuff. Um, but that stuff gets kind of expensive and none of it really matters until it's mounted on the jet because all those lines are going to have to be made to length. Um, and I don't know what those lengths are until this thing's mounted. So the intent here is to see if the instruments work, get the jet fired up, um, just get it up to idle speed, maybe a little bit above idle speed. Um, make sure all the in the ga uh, gauge cluster indicators, um, make sure everything's working how it should. And then we'll pull it off this buck and then uh, get it mounted on the pontoon. So that's the plan. So we'll see. All right, so we got our tachometer working. So that's one piece down. The next thing is to try to get this thing to build some oil pressure to make sure those bearings are lubricated before we mess with the fuel system trying to start it. Um, so I just mounted the tank up high just to help pull fluid into these lines. I think once the gearbox, the oil pump, uh, gets some fluid in there, it should prime itself and keep running. So um, I got the tank mounted up top. I'll run it through a few like startup cycles just to get some RPM in it. and. Uh, just keep trying that until we see fuel pressure on the instrument cluster. So that's where we're at. Anyway, I think we're pretty close to starting this up. So um, give it a little dry around here, make sure everything works out okay. And we'll push this thing outside and get it going. So see you guys next time.